I'm Rob LeCurie, Senior Editor at Gold Derby, here with Emmy nominee Tom Howe, composer for Shrinking and Ted Lasso. Um, Tom, first of all, let's talk about Shrinking because it, it features some beautiful piano work. I really love, in particular, there's one track called So Worth It. I really love that one. Um, what, what do you most value about the piano as a baseline or foundation for a really great score? Um, well, I, I often start with the piano for most things. I just find it's weird. I'm, I'm, when I'm writing, a lot of it's quite visual for me. And it's about the only thing that I can see um, the whole kind of range of everything and kind of imagine arrangements and things on. I have much more difficulty with that when I'm on a guitar, um, although I'm probably a better guitar player. But the piano for me is just something where I can I can sort of imagine what's going on before I even kind of um, do anything. And it's got the sound that I sort of remember um, growing up. That was the first thing I learned. And um, it's just got a very sort of pure sound. And it's just something I always gravitate towards. And in the case of um, shrinking, I decided um, after much kind of going around the houses that the score was going to be predominantly led by keyboards, not just piano, but kind of um you know roads and kind of whirlies and all sorts of things organs and things like that but that the piano would be the kind of what i would do the main central theme on for um tear who's um you know um jason Siegel's wife's character in the uh show and the rest of it wouldn't really have much piano in it so that when you heard that it would hopefully be something that kind of um stood out as um something a bit different and a bit pure and that that melody sort of on the piano crops up every time we have a flashback to her and then at the very end in that last episode when um he's talking about her at the wedding and their relationship here in its kind of entirety there so it's so beautiful yeah it really works and and i'm thinking also about the main song title which includes these some beautiful lyrics and i'm you know and you worked with um <clears throat> ben gibbard who my god i listened to him constantly um when I was in, at university. Um, what is that song trying to say about Jimmy, played by Jason Siegel in the show? Well, I think, I mean, it's, it's really saying he's in a very dark place and uh, and it can be, you know, it's a scary place too, right? So he's, you know, he's grim, but, and it's, you know, when you meet the character for the first time, he he's in a very dark place, but you're sort of wanting him to kind of, um, you're still kind of rooting for him in, in you know, in a way. And his, it's his sort of, you know, reforming over those episodes to become a better father and sort of get in touch with himself and be a better friend to those around him. But really in the first episode, he, even though he's, I mean, he's an incredibly likable um, person in real life, Jason, as well. But, you know, he's got a sort of smile about him and a kind of swagger that you kind of lean into. But really he's being, he's not good to his daughter He's terrible to his friends. He's terrible to his neighbours. I mean, the first episode, he's, you know, by the pool with a couple of, um, you know, hookers kind of doing drugs at sort of four in the morning and keeping the whole neighbourhood up, right? So, but he's got a sort of warmth to him and a kind of redemptive arc. And, um, you know, the lyrics of that song are sort of um, leaning into that and, uh, and you know, a sort of possibility of kind of redemption, really. But that's, that you know, that song was a co-write with, obviously, with Ben. And, um, you know, the lyrical content, I have to tip my hat largely in his, you know, I mean, he's a really genius in that area. And, um, you know, he was amazing to work with. And we, we only passed it back and forth about two or three times, you know, with kind of like, do you fancy adding this? Do you fancy adding that? And uh, and he said, I've got this idea and I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to call it Frightening Fishes. And I was like, I, you know, I love that. It sounds great. So I tip my hat to him. It's so death cab for cutie. Like there's no one better that uh, for melancholy than um than give it. It's such a beautiful collaboration that you have with him. And then you do this a similar thing, obviously, with Marcus Mumford on Ted Lasso. So like uh Frightening Fishes is, is um I want to hear myself think again. And then of course in the Ted Lasso theme, it ends with but heaven knows I tried. Such really beautiful, contemplative, um, melancholy words there. And I'm curious, that theme song, you were nominated at the Emmys. That's pretty exciting. Um, and i just just wondering, like, when you're collaborating with people like Marcus and Ben, who have, you know, a, a basis in, you know, pop music and in, in, uh, alternative music, what, what is that like for you as a composer? Is it um, exciting, different, daunting? Talk me through that. Well, it's, it's, it's all of those. I mean, but but what I, I mean, for me, I you know, I always, you know, the more sort of, um, 
different jobs I do and the more people I work with in terms of, you know, musicians, you know, it might be a specialist kind of flute player or something like that. But each time you do something, you hopefully learn something, right? That well, I hope that I do and you try and get better. And, um, you know, working with Marcus and Ben, both times I, I um, you know, I learned something and hopefully they may have done something, you know, done so the other way around. But they were both actually very different experiences because um, when I worked with Marcus, I actually, we met for breakfast and we got put together um, and just to meet up because Jason Sudeikis knew Marcus very well, wanted him to do the music. And I'd done two things for Bill Lawrence and he wanted me to do it. And so Bill said, well, why don't they do it together? So we we met for breakfast and we got on. And the next thing is he invited me to, to his home in Devon, which from Los Angeles is about, it's about 18 hours. It's, it's incredible. But I went over there. And, uh, and he said, just come and hang out. And I ended up staying for 10 days. I'd only met him for an hour before that. And um, we went into the studio every day and he had a really cool studio. And this was just um, uh, before we kind of uh, locked down in, so it was early sort of 2020 and he'd come off touring and uh, um, he wanted to sort of, you know, not have lots of people. And so he had this incredible studio. I spent the first day trying to work out how it all worked like rewiring things around the back of the desk and trying to figure it all out. But what was really interesting was that we had no footage. We had no nothing really except for calls that he'd had with Jason and notes he'd taken. And so we were very much going on vibe. And it was basically, therefore, like making a record rather than doing a TV show. We had nothing to go on. So we just was like, well, should we just write some songs? And so the theme song was the first thing we did. We had, we had no other. We weren't trying to get a theme to work. That was all we had. And then we sent that off and said, well, what do you think of this? And uh, I remember we went after the first um, day, we'd sort of put down some ideas. I went away that night and he'd done this lyric in the first verse. And I was trying to write the second verse and we were having a bottle, glass of wine over something at dinner. And uh, we came back, sent it off and they said, well, we love it. And that was how it kind of came out. And then everything else sort of stemmed from that as with on shrinking. By the time we got to the main title, I was probably halfway through doing the score. So I had tunes and actually both sort of very different approaches and even though um shrinking was after covid i actually have to, to this day i've still yet to meet ben in person i've only met him on zoom so that was different again as with so marcus and i had this very um concentrated period together and ben and i had phone calls but he just unbelievable well both of them are unbelievable singers but they've got very different voices and i think they both really suit the kind of shows and you know the different ideas behind them really so they're great experiences. Like, can you imagine watching Ted Lasso without that? Yeah, the, 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 when the um when the opening title starts, it's just so iconic now and so beautiful. Um, so final question is something you've probably discussed before, but I'm so interested to know this because you're really good at steering clear of cheesy inspirational underdog music when we have the action scenes in Ted Lasso and they're playing football. Uh, thank God. Uh, for you, it's, how difficult are those things to get right? Uh, it's actually it's actually really difficult. Um, and that's the bit I um, probably spend longest on uh, in terms of, you know, sometimes I find the the more emotional things and uh, um, are, are much easier for me to sort of tap into. But on some of those sporting moments, as you say, particularly when you, you know, I try to a lot of the rest of the show is acoustic um, guitars, mandolins, piano. And in the sporting moments, generally, because you need more sounds, electric guitars, bass and drums with some other things going on. But automatically, when you start putting that down, you've got to be very, very careful that you don't um, start making it too um, cheesy. And so, um, yeah, th that's probably the biggest challenge doing the, doing the sporting moments and trying to kind of, you know, work out how much you're going to hit picture wise or how much you're going to play through and, you know, whether you're going to mark the narrative too much or just give a general overall kind of, you know, mood of what's going on. And these are conversations. I mean, fun enough, when we spot Ted Lasso, um, we do these Zooms and there's probably like 16 or 17 people on the Zoom. It's more than anything that I else that I do. And uh, we debate these things for hours. I mean, the spots last four hours, you know, minimum for kind of like the first, though we sometimes break them down into other bits. But, you know, Jason has a very, very clear idea of what he um is looking for um, most of the time and uh, that's incredibly helpful obviously to have someone who you know and sometimes it's not musical but he'll describe a feeling he wants or a you know what he's looking to achieve and it's it's a good definitely a good guide to kind of get you going you know
Oh, for sure. When you have that confluence of talent and you, it, it kind of ups your A game and on this and on shrinking, you absolutely did that. Tom, thank you for your time. We will see you soon in our group chat. Look forward to it. Thank you.